Hi, AT from CNC at Home. So you have a laser and you want to make money with it. What can you do? Well, recently we did this little birdhouse project. That's something you could do. The problem with this is the amount of time it takes to do this and the material kind of makes it cost prohibitive. When we have almost $10 in material, the amount of time, which I didn't really keep track of, to, to get all of this worked into light burn so that it'll work on my laser. Once it was all burned out, we have staining, gluing, and more gluing and more gluing to get this to work. How much can you sell the birdhouse? 10 bucks, we can make our material cost back. 20 bucks, it's not gonna pay for my time. 40 bucks? Who's going to pay 40 bucks for a birdhouse? Especially a birdhouse that's just a birdhouse. I mean, seriously, there's nothing special about this, nothing custom about it. That's where we can make money with a laser. When you're doing things that are short run, customized things, that's what people will pay extra money for. If you're doing low volume stuff, it's going to need to be customized. It's going to need to be personalized. It's going to need to be something that the customer has asked for or would like that they're just not going to find somewhere else. Examples of that would be the coasters that we did recently um, that were for a specific person, for a specific basketball team, for a specific year, that kind of stuff. That's very customized, very low run, so low quantities. I mean, one of each of those. If I were going to sell something, Customize like that is the direction you need to go. Another thing uh, would be like weddings or any kind of reception where you maybe want to have a place card at the table that had somebody's name, maybe the, the name of the event. Uh, again, very customized. You could do it on paper. You can make those little tents. Uh, you can get Avery labels to do that, but that's not real memorable. Um, maybe you could do something like a coaster Here's an example of a slate coaster that we're going to talk about where it's for a wedding. So it has the name of the bride and groom on top. It has a specific person's name who's going to be sitting there and it's got the date of their wedding on it. So that's something that's very customizable. And then you can charge a premium for this because these are one-offs. I mean, some of it's always going to be the same, but the name in here is going to vary. The other thing is this be can become a business card because look at the back of this. Look at that. Look at all that room. Your company's name, phone number, email address, website, all that information, QR code, all that information could go on the back of this coaster and it becomes a business card. So when somebody takes this home and they think it's really cute, they maybe keep it for a while, but then they're thinking, hey, we have this reception coming up. We could use something like this. Where did these come from? Right on the back of there. What I like to do is go over to Lightburn and kind of show you how I did this and talk about how we can use our variable text in here so that we don't have to keep typing in different names each time we want to do one of these. We'll use a comma separated file where we have the first name, last name. And each time we burn one of these, it'll increment to the next one. So I just have to put the blank in and burn it. First thing we'll have to do in light burn, because I want to use my P7 laser. I've never done slate with my P7 laser before. What do we do first? Material test. Okay. So we do a material test where I use different burn parameters, speed and power, and I get a grid and I can decide what's going to work best on that. So that's what I'll be doing first. Let's head over to Lightburn and talk about doing material tests and then talk about how we're going to do these coasters and get them personalized. To create a material test, go under the menu option laser tools. There we have material test. I already have a preset for slate, so let's pull that up and take a look at it. One of the features that we have is to add a title. And what I want on this one is the material slate, and I want the laser that I'm using. How many times have I gone to my material tests only to see that I can't tell which machine it was done on? 
Many times I use a Sharpie and will write that on my material test so I have that information. This is a slick way to do that. Just add that up here. I'm going to do 7 by 7 grid. My speed is going to go from 3,000 millimeters per minute to 6,000 millimeters per minute. My power is going to go from 30% to 60%. I have my material set to 0.1 line interval and my angle is zero, one pass. Those are the parameters that will actually be utilized. My speed and power obviously come from the material test itself. The text, I have a pretty good idea that 4,000 millimeters per minute, 50% power will be great for the text. That's just not my, my guess. We'll find out. Should be good. The border setting is something that I typically don't use. I could have this turned on, the on-off switch is right up here. This setting basically will put a border around uh, your material test. I'll just turn it on for a second here and we'll do a preview. And we can see that there's this border that goes around. If that's something that you need or want, have that turned on. I'm going to turn it off for my test. For my test, when we do a preview, we see what it looks like. We're going to start at 30,000 or 30,000, <laughs> that'd be fast. 3,000 millimeters per minute, go up to 6. We'll start at 30% power, go up to 60% power. We have our line interval showing and we show that it's slate P7, which is the laser that I'm using. To run this, all you have to do is click start. That's how you do a material test. Here's what my coaster template looks like. I have the name of the bride and the groom on top, and that's fixed text. I have this nice fancy curly Q line thing. Down at the bottom, I've got a couple fancy corner curly Q pieces. I have the date of the wedding, and then in the middle, I have two pieces of variable text. And these are both set up as merge slash CSV. Percent zero will take the first value from my comma separated value file and percent one will take the second value. This is all zero based, so the first column is zero, the second column is one, etc. The first row is zero, the second row is one, third row is two. Looking over at my variable text settings to get my uh, text file in here, I could just go to browse and I can select the file. Here's what that file looks like. I've opened up this text file in Notepad. I'm using a Windows machine. And there's a list of potential guests for the event or the wedding or the reception. I have first name, comma, last name. And I have that all the way down. There are a couple people who just go by a single name so I did first name comma and then nothing for the last name. Here's how that ends up looking in our template. Currently I'm on zero. So if I do a test, it'll fill in the first name. We have Mel Tepid. If I go to the next record, Al T. Garden, next record, Ringo Alaska, next record, Dutch Buddha, etc., etc. When we get to one of the records that was just a single name, it shows up as a first name. This is one of the cool features of using variable text. It's called auto advance. What this will do is when it's turned on, each time you do a burn, it'll automatically go to the next record. I'm using the P7. I have my zeroing fixture in there. Once a burn is done, I pull the tile out put a new tile in and I can just start the next burn. Because I have this turned on, it'll automatically go to the next record for me. One thing that I should probably set is return to finish position. Once this is done, I want this to go back to X of 0, Y of 150. I do have this turned on. This will move the laser head up and out of the way when the burn is done.
That way I can easily remove a tile and put the next one in place. I'll make sure that I'm using absolute coordinates. I do have my zeroing fixture in place. That way the zero is always zero. And this template does have an offset here. So I've got my working area and the actual size of the coaster blank. The edges of these coaster blanks are kind of rough and aren't flat. That's why I have this um, gap, essentially. This is a good working area for the blanks. Let's go ahead and do one of the burns. The first thing, as always, is I will do a frame. If that looks good, I'll start the burn when that one's done. I won't have to do anything here. It'll automatically increment to the next coaster. I can just tell it to do another burn, and it'll do that. Let's go over to the laser and see what that looks like. This process certainly seems to work out well. We've got some tiles, they're customized. We've got different people's names on them, and that works well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you like the content of our channel, think about subscribing. That really helps us out. Enjoy doing your CNC at home projects. Mm.